Throughout our history, AFSCME has had bold and dynamic leaders, leaders with vision and vitality, leaders who helped our union adapt to change and continue to grow. With a belief in public service, I felt that we should organize the employees and tap the very large resource which was and is resident in this vast body of workers. 86 years ago, a young city planner from Two Rivers, Wisconsin, named Arnold Zander, led a movement of fellow state employees to protect and preserve the civil service system. They were fighting for their jobs and against patronage and cronyism. Arnold Zander believed public employees should be judged by their services to their community, not their connections to politicians. He led marches and demonstrated and lobbied the legislator. And under Zander's strong leadership, AFSCME's movement spread to states around the country. In 1936, a newly christened American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees was granted a charter by the AFL. And Arnold Zander was elected international president, a position he would hold for 28 years. You will find that the whole history of progress in this and all other developed societies and developing societies that has more reasonableness is involved at the workplace, the quality of the society is improved. Jerry Worf was a Brooklyn-born street fighter. He didn't let anything stop him. Not childhood polio, not powerful figures like New York master builder Robert Moses, who didn't want to recognize the rights of public service workers. President Worf ran on a platform of aggressive organizing, and he delivered. He led our union to a period of stratospheric growth, from 220,000 members when he was elected in 1964 to nearly 700,000 a decade later. He wasn't afraid to ruffle feathers, to stand for what he thought was right. That meant challenging other leaders in the labor movement over the issues like the Vietnam War. It meant taking on a segregationist mayor in Memphis during the 1968 sanitation strike. Brothers and sisters, it is time that we make the issue of jobs the number one item on the public policy agenda of this nation. One of the key figures in the Memphis strike was a young AFSCME representative named Bill Lucy, who negotiated with the city and helped the sanitation workers ultimately win their struggle for dignity and respect. A few years later, Bill Lucy was elected AFSCME's secretary treasurer, going on to serve in that post for 38 years. As founder of the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists, perhaps no one in the nation's history has done more to elevate African Americans in the labor movement, to connect labor rights and civil rights and human rights. Secretary Treasurer Lucy's pioneering leadership extends beyond the United States. He was president of Public Services International, the world's largest union federation, and he co-founded the Free South Africa movement that helped bring down the apartheid regime. Let us stand for an America where workers are treated with dignity and respect. Let us stand for a more powerful AFSCME. When Jerry Wirth died in 1981, Jerry McEntee was elected AFSCME's new president. President McEntee grew up in Philadelphia. His father, Bill McEntee, was a sanitation worker who led his historic 1938 sanitation worker strike. Joining AFSCME in 1956, McEntee would go on to lead our union's work in Pennsylvania, including a groundbreaking 1970 law guaranteeing collective bargaining rights for state employees. In 1975, he led one of the largest and most successful strikes in labor history. As international president, he continued AFSCME's civil rights leadership, making the struggle against gender-based pay discrimination a top priority. He turned AFSCME into a political powerhouse. He led the fight against Social Security privatization during the George W. Bush administration. And he did it all with irresistible energy, passion, and joyfulness, and toughness, too. He still has, as President Bill Clinton once said, the heart of a lion. Our union has experienced plenty of challenges over the years, but each time we have emerged even stronger, thanks to the resilience of AFSCME's members and the guiding hand of AFSCME's leaders. As we prepare for the next chapter, we look back at our history for inspiration. We study once again the lessons taught by Arnold Zander, Jerry Worf, Bill Lucy, and Jerry McIntyre. We draw strength from their legacy. We stand on their shoulders to see a brighter future.